I give great credit to Eastern Illinois. Uh, first game, having a, a, all their key guys together, I, I think since we played them the first time uh, six weeks ago. And I thought they played with great urgency. They were the more physical team. They were the tougher team and, and certainly the better coach team. Uh, we just never could get into a rhythm offensively, and I thought their defense had a lot to do with that. Uh, we, we missed some open looks, uh, but we did not finish plays around the basket. I, I, th I thought their toughness and athleticism really bothered us at seven block shots. And then on our defensive end, we just never could, outside of the turnovers we were able to force, we never could string together stops. Uh, I, th I thought their, their offensive efficiency uh, was too much for us tonight uh, to overcome. We'll open it up for questions. Matt, X's and O's aside, whether it was their aggressiveness or just their body language, uh, you know, EIU was woofing a little bit. They were very confident in here tonight. What was it that you guys just didn't seem to be able to match that? I really don't have a great answer, Jeff. I, I just thought they, they played with toughness. They, they were flying around, played with more energy than we did, uh, you know, which is you know, disappointing to say as a coach. I mean, I think that's an area we've made a lot of improvement this year. Um, play, we, we had been playing with a lot more toughness at both ends of the court in recent weeks uh, with more urgency and purpose. And for whatever reason, we just never got into a rhythm tonight. Uh, we, we never could string together consecutive baskets on our offensive end. Uh, we couldn't get enough, you know, what we refer to as kills, three stops in a row. Uh, so that, that really limited our ability to get out and transition. And, and again, I, I just thought whether it was screening uh, or not screening, uh, whether it was post play, uh, whether it was one-on-one -on -one off the dribble, they were, they were just a tougher team uh, for 40 minutes. And, and we never – really were able to get over that hump. I know the first half, fortunately, we forced 12 turnovers, which enabled us to hang around. We finished the, the last four minutes of the first half in, in a good fashion to cut the lead to two. Come out, good execution, first play to tie it. Thought we turned them over a couple times again and we didn't convert there. And then they hit us with a little 6-0 run to go back up six and just felt like we were playing from behind six or eight the rest of the way. What has Eastern Illinois been able to do against you guys these last several games that has really kind of forced you guys to struggle offensively when the last several weeks you seem to have kind of found a good rhythm? Well, I thought they did a good job of, of eliminating some of our ball reversal, uh, which has been really good for us over the last six weeks. Uh, they got the ball, the ball got stuck on one side of the floor too often tonight, and I'm, I'm sure that was by design uh, on their part. Uh, and then, you know, first half only had three turnovers, really only had one, but, you know, three were called. And then in the second half, you know, we had nine turnovers, uh, nine, nine opportunities where we didn't get a chance to score on a night where you're not shooting it well, it makes it really difficult to win. In the two games against EIU, they seemed to try to slow the game down and play half court offense. Do you think the pace of play had anything to do with the lack of rhythm on offense? Well, I, I, I think the issue there, Gage, is we weren't able to get stops. I, I do agree. I, th I thought they were playing in the half court, and I'm sure by design, uh, trying to score late in the shot clock. And when you're always taking the ball out of the net because you don't get stops, it eliminates your opportunities to get out and transition and run. You know, fortunately, we got a few layups in the first half by forcing some turnovers. Uh, but in the second half, you know, we weren't able to get enough stops. They were, they were scoring layups, um, which allowed it to continue to be a half-court game. When we went zone a couple times trying to break the rhythm, uh, they hit a couple big shots from the perimeter. So they had a very balanced attack, uh, which made it difficult on us to get the pace to our liking. You always say rebounds is a toughness stat, and I guess that sort of uh, falls into your, your disappointment tonight in that department. Yeah, we only gave up five offensive rebounds, Jeff, but two of them in the first half really stand out. I thought they, they only had three at the half, uh, but both of them led to dunks by Skipper Brown. Uh, I thought they just outworked us to get the ball and then made the extra pass, and, and it led to easy baskets for them. Uh, then they got a, a put back late. 
you know, we, we had eight offensive rebounds on our end. You know, the reason the, the rebounding so skewed is they didn't miss many shots and we missed a ton of shots. But when we did get our offensive rebounds, the eight we had, I don't, I don't think we were very effective in turning those eight offensive rebounds into points. I, I think they turned into block shots uh, that led to transition for them. In their offense, what made them so effective? Because it seemed like they kept getting to the rim at will. Yeah, I, I think the Marvin Johnson's one of the most talented players in our league. He's really difficult to guard. I, th I thought he hit some tough shots there in the second half. Um, you know, we got caught dead behind in the post, and, and Skipper Brown and, and Friday uh, made us pay. Made us pay for those. Um, so, you know, credit to them. You know, they, they were certainly the better team tonight. Eddie. Anything that has happened in the last couple of weeks and a winning sort of the great deodorant, uh, was there any inkling when you kind of look back at it that a uh, performance like tonight, or is this just that you, maybe you saw this coming a little bit, or is this just a – were you surprised by what you saw? Well, again, the first time for them having kind of a full roster, uh, they were missing a lot of toughness uh, with Dixon and Wallace being out for so long. And then just having gotten Friday and Max Smith back recently as well. Um, but, I mean, I, I guess I would look at that Moorhead State game. You know, we, we got out toughed. They were more physical than us. Half court, grinded out game. I, I don't think it's any secret. And that's what happened here tonight. Um, but, no, I, I thought we'd been playing with great energy and confidence. Uh, we got shots for the players who have been scoring uh, very efficiently for us. And we just did not shoot it well from behind the arc or finish plays well around the basket tonight. How do you prevent this from leaking over into the game that you had to play uh, against SIU on Saturday, a team you just played three days ago? Yeah, I think the mindset's going to be the key there. I mean, that we have plenty of examples uh, of, of these crazy scheduled games this year where you play a team twice in a week or back-to-back -back days. Uh, where, where the team that won the first game by 25 or 30 doesn't come to play on game two and, and the result goes the other way. So I, I think it's a mentality uh, that we get back on the practice court tomorrow, get in the video room, and uh, try to get better tomorrow and prepare uh, for Edwardsville on Saturday night.